Hey there, Mr. Weaver here, and this is 8th grade, Module 4, Lesson 6, Graph Linear Equations. After this lesson, you need to be able to interpret the slope and y-intercept of a line from an equation of the form y equals mx plus b in order to graph the line on a coordinate plane. Let's learn. Graph equations in slope-intercept form. This shows the steps for graphing the equation y equals 2 thirds x plus 1 using the slope and the y-intercept. So in order to go from an equation to graphing it, we're going to follow the steps. So first we're going to find the slope and the y-intercept from our equation. So our slope was our value of m, which is in front of x, that's our slope, and our y-intercept was what was at the end of our b. Next, once we've identified those two things, we're going to graph the y-intercept by plotting a point there. So in this case, my b was at positive 1, so I'm going to just plot a point going up 1. Here we can see they have a point there. After we've plotted that point, we're going to think about our slope as our ratio. Remember, our slope is the ratio of our rise over the run. So in this case, our slope was 2 thirds meaning I have to rise 2 with a run of 3. So I'm rising 2, and I have a run of 3. Once I've done that, wherever I end up, I'm going to plot another point. Finally, once I have two points, I can connect them and keep the line going with a straight line. It might be helpful as well to figure out other points on the line first. So what you could do is start working yourself backwards, if you remember with slope triangles, any point on the line has the same slope. So going from here to here should also have a slope of two thirds and so on. So I might also want to put a point here just to make my connecting the dots a little bit easier. But once you've done that, you have yourself your graph. Example one, graph lines using slope intercept four. Graph y equals negative two thirds x plus four using the slope and y intercept. So Step one, identify the slope and y-intercept. Our slope was negative two-thirds, and our y-intercept was positive four. So if we're graphing this, we're first going to do our y-intercept, which is at zero, four, up one, two, three, four spaces, and I'm going to plot my point. From there, I'm doing my slope. So I'm going to swing this negative up to the top and do negative two over three, this is my rise, so I have a rise of negative two, so I'm gonna go down two for my rise, and then I have a run of three. So I'm gonna go over three. From there, I'm plotting my point. I'm gonna go backwards the other and kind of make, almost looks like stairs. So I have another point there. And from that, I'm going to connect the dots as best as I can. Hopefully you have a ruler or some kind of straight edge that you could use to make that line a little bit straighter. I'm going to add some arrowheads at the end to show that it keeps going in both directions. And there I have my line. A couple of ways I can quick double check that I did it correctly. I see plus four, so I should be looking four units up. All right, my y-intercept there, good. And my slope, I see that it's negative. So if we remember, negative slope should be going downward when we're reading it from left to right. That's the direction my graph is going, so I know I'm on the right track there. And was my slope down 2 over 3 each time? Yes, it was. So just like when we're solving equations, when we're graphing, we should double check that we've plotted things correctly. Check your understanding. Graph y equals negative 4x plus 5 using the slope and y-intercept. Pause the video now and complete this check. Let's check. First, my y-intercept is at positive 5, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There's my y-intercept, and from there I'm going to go down 4, but this is really a ratio of down 4 over 1. So my rise, down 4, and then my run was over 1. Plot a point, and then I'm going to keep going just so I can make the most of this. Down 4 over 1, down 4 over 1, that would be off the graph, somewhere around there. Then I can connect using a straight edge would be something like that. Arrowheads to show that it keeps going in both directions. And that would be my graph of y equals negative 4x plus 5.
Example two, graph lines using slope intercept form. A typical leopard gecko is three inches long at birth and grows at a rate of about one third inch per week for the first few months. The equation y equals one third x plus three represents the length y of a gecko after x weeks. Graph this equation. So first when we're graphing, we're gonna identify our slope and y-intercept. So our slope here is one third and our y-intercept is three. That was our starting value. It was three inches long when it was born, so when it started. Let's graph this, our y-intercept first at three. Here's our zero, zero point, so three would be there. And then slope of one third, so it's going up one for our rise and over three for our run, and then I can plot my point. And I would go, if I wanted to keep going, I could plot another point there, and then another point there. Those were where my dots on the line would be. And then finally, I want to connect with a straight line and have it keep going. For this one, I don't want to necessarily extend it more to the left because if it's negative one weeks, that's before it was born. It doesn't really make sense. So we're talking about after it's born. I can extend it going this way to show that it could keep going a little bit. So our graph would look something like this. Check your understanding, read through the situation, and create a graph that represents the pages written in X weeks. Pause the video now and complete the check. Let's check. So first our y-intercept is at 6, so we should have a dot up here at 6. That's where he's starting. Then he's going to write four pages per week. That's our slope, so be careful on this one. Our weeks are separated by two spaces, four spaces in one week. And then I could keep going, but I'm kind of out of room already. So our graph would look something like this. And it would keep going that way until he was done with his book. Let's learn. Graphs of horizontal lines. This graph shows a horizontal line. All points on that horizontal line have the same y-coordinate. So we can see negative 3 has a y-coordinate of 3. 0 has a y-coordinate of 3. This one has a y-coordinate of 3 and a y-coordinate of 3. When it's a horizontal line, the slope was 0. If you remember from the previous lesson, horizontal lines have a slope of 0. So if we plug in 0 for our slope, we end up with that being gone. 0 times anything is 0. We don't have to write it we're left with y equals b. So if you see a horizontal line, the equation is just going to be y equals b, where b is the value of the y-intercept, or all the y-coordinates. Just happens to be the y-intercept as well, which makes it easy. Example three, graph horizontal lines. Graph y equals negative one. So when we see an equation like this, it means no matter what the x values are, y is equal to negative one. There's no x or nothing to change at x. So let's plot, first I'm gonna plot my y-intercept as negative one. If I plugged in say negative two for x, it was multiplied by zero, I still get negative one. If I plugged in one, I'd still get negative one. If I plugged in five, I'd still get negative one. So no matter what, it's at negative one. This is a horizontal line along negative one, and hopefully you can draw it straighter than I can. Check your understanding. Graph y equals negative six. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. So your graph should be a horizontal line. There's zero x, and it should be down six. So I'm marking at down six, and then I'm gonna draw my line with my arrowhead showing that it keeps going in both directions. Let's learn graphs of vertical lines. The graph of a vertical line is shown. The slope of the vertical line is undefined, so we can't really use the slope intercept form for the equation for a vertical line. But similar to horizontal lines where all of them have the same y coordinate, a vertical line, all of them have the same x coordinate. So if we look at this line, no matter what, they all have an x-coordinate that is the same. In this case, it's negative 2. So if we were to come up with an equation for this line, 
we would just say that no matter what, x is equal to negative 2. When we're writing vertical line equations, we're going to say x equals a number, and then whatever number that is is the x-coordinate of all of the values. Example 4, graph vertical lines. Graph x equals 4. So I can tell right away just by looking at what the equation looks like, it is not in y equals mx plus b format. It's x equals a number, which means it's a vertical line. So no matter what, the x-coordinate is going to be 4. So if we plot some things, 4 is over here, so I can plot 4, negative 2, I can plot 4, 0, I can plot 4, 1, I can plot 4, 3, all of them have an x-coordinate of 4. Then I'm going to draw my line with my arrowheads to show that it goes on in both directions. So x equals 4 was a vertical line that went through the x-coordinates of 4. Check your understanding. Graph x equals 7. Pause the video now and complete this check. Let's check. x equals 7 means that the x coordinate is always 7. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. It would follow along on this line. And it is a vertical line since it's just x equals a number. No matter what, the x coordinate was 7.